Hey guys, it's Mike here at Taylor RC and I get the chance today to have a look at the Taylor 35 V2 uh, engine which is coming out um, springtime this year. So we teased it at Christmas, we had a lot of questions and I'm sorry I haven't got around to answering everybody. In fact, let me just apologize for the delay on this video. I've been getting used to sort of uh, life with two kids and it was more difficult than I expected. So uh, yeah, hence why there's a few week delay on this video, but anyway, we have um, some cool stuff to show you. Hopefully you're gonna enjoy what we're showing you and you'll understand a bit more about what we're trying to achieve with the V2 and, and where the progression with the V1 to V2 has, has, has gone. Um, first, let me just talk a little bit. Sorry, the, the, the 35 itself, it was over a year ago that we announced it and launched just shortly after. Um, just a huge thanks to all the guys that supported it. I, I just can't tell you what it means. You know, it, it's pretty scary and, and to put your mortgage on the line and you know take out all the all the finance required to do something like this as a small manufacturer. You know, it's not easy. Um, obviously, guys like Zenoa that are producing engines, they've been doing it for years, they've got big budgets, they're talking of big quantities. We're doing this on small numbers. On small budgets, uh, but high quality, and trying to to you know go go to the level that we're famous for, and it, it's not easy. So you know, it, it, it mean we couldn't do it without you guys. So firstly, thank you, big big thank you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the thirty five where we got to so far. It is really exciting to be a year on from when we launched, uh, a year on from when I first uh, teased the whole concept to you guys, and you. You know, got behind us. Thank you. Obviously, all the you know the experts come out of the woodwork and said their their piece about the the, the cylinder and how it wasn't going to work and the exhaust port was too big and all that kind of stuff. You know, great fun. Uh, that just we lit a fire underneath us and, and that just gave us motivation. So that was good. But you know, we're we're a year on now. We achieved what we set out to achieve. We delivered what we promised. And I just really want to reiterate that because it is super important from a pride perspective. Um, we said that we were going to give you a stock engine that was able to. You know, compete with or be better than the 34 Zeno reads that were on the market. And we have done, you know, the, 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 the results are there. You can't take that away from us. Um, there's been lots of competition. Some guys have won sometimes and, and we've won other times. And there's been lots of different videos to prove that. And that was exactly what we promised we would do with a stock engine. And then, you know, it, the, the proof is there. Uh, many guys can attest to that and, and thank you for doing that. And it's been really good fun. Everything's been kept pretty professional between different manufacturers, generally speaking, and, and that's been nice. And we've got to learn a lot about the market. So we, we got out there with the stock engine that we wanted to do. Now it's time to take it to the, to, to the potential that we initially put in there. And I want to show you a little bit about what is currently on the market. I've got some uh, CY, Zenoa, some 35 V1s that we're currently shipping. And I've got some uh, V2 stuff and I've also got a, a big bore engine just to show you the cylinders cut in half. And specifically today, we're looking at the transfer ports because that's probably the biggest thing that has um, changed in a, in a massive aspect on the V2. So let's not mess around. Well, I will just say quick FAQs. Uh, guys have been asking me price, we're gonna stay the same. The, the goal at the minute is that the V2, as it rolls out, will stay the same as the, the V1 um, and the V1.5 that we're currently doing now. The V1.5 that our guys have been asking is a complete V2 engine in a, a billet component sense other than the cylinder. So say you buy a V1.5 now because you don't wanna wait till spring, that is not a problem. You'll buy the 1.5 now, which we have done at the best possible price the, the, the V2 may come out of the, the original V1 price. We'll, we'll do our best on that. Um, and then you can bolt a V2 cylinder on and you will have a full uninterrupted V2 spec. So that's that's that. Um, and yes, yeah, so a price of it. And, and the twin, a lot of guys have been asking about the 70 twin. That was teased a long time ago. The reason I held it back is because of the V2 cylinder. I wasn't willing to ship a an expensive premium engine with a cylinder that I knew was gonna be superseded in, in a matter of months. Uh, and yeah, okay, fine, we've, it, making, casting a cylinder and designing it is quite a complex matter. And we've been pushed back a few months. So there's been delays and I do apologize for that, but I still feel proud that I held to my my uh, my virtues on that. And, and we, we've delayed the 70 twin purely because of the cylinder. We've literally got, you know, engines sat there, ready to bolt the cylinders on the ship. And everybody got, everybody has shown interest or placed a pre-order at their own, um, Volition, it, you know, their, your engine is physically sat there, at, ready to bolt the cylinders on the ship. But it, it would have been wrong, in my opinion, to ship you 
um, uh, you know, an engine with, with cylinders that are soon to be outdated. There's quite a bit of work making a twin because the machine and the cylinders to suit and et cetera, et cetera. And then you would have been incurring an expense straight away to have the latest kit and that's just not right. So anyway, <clears throat> I think that's covered all the questions you guys have been asking, the main ones anyway. So let's get on with it. So here I have a CY23cc engine, the smallest um, sort of engine on the market at the minute. Great little motor, to be honest. It came on, on my DBXL, my first uh, end car that got me into Fiscal. Um, so here's a CY23cc cut in half just to look at the transfer ports. And there's no interior wall on the uh, the small engines, um, like the, the sort of 23, 29s, purely because the piston provides the inside wall, which is not a problem, uh, limited space. You can see here that it is a very basic design. The, the gases flow from the crankcase, um, they're compressed, they're pushed up the transfer ports on the straight path, they hit a 90 degree corner and they're fired into the cylinder. You know, it is very simple. It does the job, they, they, you know, they do a great job for what they are, um, but they are massively limited by design when you wanna get that extra you know, 20% that you wanna sort of take an engine to its kind of, its potential if you like, so on, on capacity. So that is a, like, just give you an idea of what a CY23 looks like. Now the famous Zenoa G320 is a great engine. Uh, there's a little look inside for you. The transfer ports, as you can see, have, they're a little bit more, uh, they're a little bit wider. They have an inside wall, which gives them a little bit more um, ability to sort of to curve into the cylinder and get a bit better flow angle. But the, um, as you can see here, there is still a massive compromise, you know, and it's a compromise that works, but it, it does lose a little bit of potential for the capacity of the engine. And on this uh, particular one, these are stock transfer plates. Uh, there are companies that make aftermarket ones and you can see why straight away that they help because there is this horrible little kind of uh, bulbous carbuncle um, in the port which obviously interrupts flow, creates turbulence um, and uh, you know limits power. So there straight away is an example of um, what the, uh, the G320 cylinder looks like. And the other important thing which I really want to hit home with you guys that are interested in the 35 um, is you can see here by the casting that the physical amount of meat between my fingers now, there is not enough room to get a proper transfer port uh, path and angle of entry into the cylinder. And I think that's an important thing to say is because, you know, and hence why we had the, the confidence in all our initial testing is that our stock 35, as we've been shipping for the last year, um, it has a slightly better transfer path here. And we knew these guys were limited by this transfer area. Doesn't matter how much magic and trickery they put into the, the other elements of the engine, and obviously there are lots of them are read conversions, which helps, they're still limited by design. So that is kind of uh, one of the, the pieces there that we, we knew was up against. And that was the main motivation for doing our own cylinder, is because we wanted to get better, <clears throat> uh, better mold to then work from. So here is a standard 35 uh, V1. You can see the bridge exhaust port there. Um, you can look here, there's still a relatively basic port. You know, there are, as we said, we wanted to produce a stock engine that was nice and simple, um, had potential for tuners to work with, and lots of guys have really enjoyed putting their own engines and they've had some good results, you know, great results. In fact, I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute with one particular guy. Um, it, but but it's still simple. You know, we, we knew that on, on launch. The whole point of it was to get an engine out there. We'd, we'd spent a lot of money, we got to the stage that we are here, and we knew we had a fantastic working product. Lots of guys have, have got 35s now and they're good engines, right? I mean, they, you know, they do what they say on the tin. Huge amounts of bottom end, uh, reasonable RPM for the size of it and uh, a great strength of in through the mid range. Um, but they do have this limitation on the transfer port shape. There is meat here, so tuners can work on it and improve them, uh, but, but they still have a limitation in design. So um, this was, was the area that we knew we wanted to spend more time doing R&D and get a perfected version when we did our, our later sort of race version, which has now turned into what we're calling the V2. So I don't think there's anything else to cover there. Um, yeah, no, so, so you can see that, that that's what we're currently doing. now. I want to bring. I want to mention a particular individual uh, before I turn this one around. Dennis Collins. A lot of guys will come across him. Um, he's not a particularly vocal guy on the forums. He doesn't like too much exposure, but he has incredible talent, and he's a super guy. You know, I talked to him straight away. We've been working together, or, or at least chatting and getting on for a couple of years, and we've actually been working together for a year now. He helped us with the uh, the videos for the launch of the thirty five. Um, he can set up a car good, he can tune a car great. He's, he's this incredible natural talent as a tuner and, and just, I'm making a point of it because I just wanna say thank you to him because the V2 cylinder is actually has a lot of Dennis's input on it. And, and I don't mind admitting 
that uh, I, I'm always willing to listen and learn. And I think it's a big part of, of being a, you know, a good guy is that you've got to admit that other people are better than you at certain elements of things. And, and a combination of my uh, experience and skills and Dennis's experience and, and skills have gone into the V2. And that is why I feel it's such a great product because to have someone else, another experienced, talented tuner to bounce off of has given me so much confidence. He's given me so much, and he's a great tester as well. So you can send him a product, he'll test it, he'll be honest with you. And we've, we've just learned so much and I've, I've gone to a level that I didn't, I don't think I would have achieved on my own, um, given, you know, even a longer time frame. So Dennis, thank you. This was um, one of Dennis's many um, uh, ported, um, you know, 35 V1s that he was playing with. And he identified the same thing that, that we did straight on, that the transfers, you know, as he said, pretty obvious we're, we're basic and he wanted to work on them he used the meat that we gave him in the mold and we gained a lot of power lots of other mods were done obviously you know intake and exhaust and the cases which hence why we're now shipping these 1.5s that have v2 cases uh with much better um case design which again dennis had input towards shout out to him um but you can see here we're starting to get a little bit more sensible transfer port path we're getting a better entry angle and we're getting a more consistent um, sort of flow angle with less change in velocity before it enters the cylinder. And I think that's very important that uh, you know to, to note there. And it's something that we thought, right, the V2, we knew we were going to make a, a, a fresh mold for that. It was always the plan. And we wanted to, 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 to learn as much as we could and, uh, and then move on from there. And I want to add, which I didn't do at the start of the video, which I, I meant to do, is this V2 cylinder is as much for everybody that has joined the project so far as it is to bring new customers in. You know, anybody with an engine, whether it's the first V1, whether it's one of these V1.5s that we're shipping now, you can bolt a V2 cylinder on and you will see instant performance gains and you'll be happy. You know, and, and all the spares that we're bringing out with the, uh, that fit the V2, um, we've got the same piston. That's our custom piston, by the way. We're not using anybody else's piston. The piston we are doing is much better than as another piston. It's high quality, it's a better design. It covers the exhaust port properly on the width. It, it, it's super, very proud of that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's what, you know, what, what, what uh, I've lost my thread for a second, but, um, yeah, what we're doing now with the V2 is, is as much for you guys that have got an engine now. So don't feel that you're being left out in any way. Don't feel you're being pushed away. You've had your engine for a year now, if you've, if you got on board at the start and we're now offering you a bolt on upgrade, super duper dog. We already do WJ carb upgrades. We do all sorts of stuff. So we always care about people that have honored us by supporting us um, in existence. So anything we do moving forward, you can guarantee will fit your engine. Uh, so here is a 46 uh, GT barrel. And I wanted to show you this purely because it gives you a bit more insight into a sort of a more higher end, bigger, voluminous um, cylinder and what we do to get the big performance that you see from our big block engines. This is quite common in two-stroke industry, nothing uh, specific to us at all. You see a nice wide transfer that has a great smooth sort of transfer entry into the actual bore. Uh, and, and that means that when the, the air is coming, the fuel air mixture is coming up from the case, it doesn't have to lose velocity in its transition from uh, vertical to horizontal motion. You know, so where it's coming up through the port here and into the cylinder, it's a nice, smooth, logical path. It, it doesn't, I think anybody that has half an ounce of common sense can see why that would make a lot more sense than a cylinder that goes you know, straight up and uh, across like that and has that horrible right de round of degree. So you get the idea of what we're looking at. So let's not mess around. This is one of the first v2 prototypes that we cast and you can see it's pretty sort of rough and basic inside it's all just about proof of concept to start with and proof that the mold is is successful in its um, dimensional sense you can see straight away here the transfers are really different you know we've actually widened the mold again we're significantly wider now we have a proper um, interior wall to match the exterior wall which gets you a consistent what it's what's key when you're designing transfers is obviously the entry angle into the cylinder the velocity of the gases traveling up the transfer port, keeping them consistent, but also keeping the, the, the like, making sure there's not a bottleneck is what I'm trying to say. And if you are producing a bottleneck at the last minute, you're doing it to add pressure at the correct time. You're not doing it to turn gases in an awkward fashion that slows them down and reduces the amount of uh, fuel air mixture that you can get into the cylinder on one rotation. You know, because obviously a two-stroke is all about getting getting fuel in and out of the engine, in and out. It's a pump. You know, it's just a pump, and we're trying to make the pump more efficient. 
and these transfers do exactly that you know and the, the once we start rolling on to, to teaser videos and stuff you'll see the difference it, it's just chalk and cheese um and this is now where we can go from providing a stock engine that competes with the best out there to taking the, the hobby to a next level where you can buy an engine that hasn't got any hand porting and you know what i say by hand porting i mean is is that we've touch the edges of the cylinder because when you cast a cylinder you you nick a sill the plating around the edges of the bores which gives you excellent reliability for the ring and if you can cast a cylinder at extreme performance level without having to touch it afterwards it means you get a more reliable high performance engine so uh, a ported engine is always going to have reliability uh, downsides compared to an engine that hasn't had to be ported so the idea with this is that we've now got a high performance version of the 35cc. We've tried to take things more to the max. We've kept our exhaust port. There's no major changes here. A few little tweaks in, in uh, the actual tunnel uh, shape. But, uh, and this, don't judge the shape, it's just a rough casting. It's not been bored yet. As you can see, the bore's tiny. So it's just as it comes out of the mold. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, that, that's the, the, the big change there is the transfer ports. There's quite a lot of tweaking in the intake port. And here is a uh, November prototype. This is a, an early November prototype that we did, uh, much more of a finished version. You can see the beautiful um, branding on there and the, just the stunning muscular exterior shape to the transfer ports. I just think it's so sexy. I mean, it's probably just because the amount of time and money I've invested in it, but it gets me pretty, pretty hyped up. Um, if you look, I'm hoping I'm getting the angles right here. If you look up inside that bore, you will see some much neater ports. Uh, I say it's a whole brand new mold now so that we could learn from everything that we've done um, so far and uh, improve on it. Let's just get this. Hopefully you can see up there now. Um, I'll just turn it upside down. Maybe that'll help. You can see inside there um, a little bit. So, uh, you know, the, the intake port is new as well. It is a brand spanking new intake port. There is some real cool little tricks that totally came from Dennis. I hadn't had any experience with piston port engines until I decided to, to design a small block. Uh, Dennis taught me a huge amount, you know, fair play. Um, and it's some pretty cool tricks that I've never seen any other Zuno Attuna do, and I'm quite grateful that he shared them with me. So we've been able to employ them on the 35. We've made some more prototypes since then, and we're, we're just starting the production phase now which um, hence why we're aiming for about springtime. It's a realistic time to hopefully get the, the casting done, the, the machining, the painting, etc., to bring the product out. So hopefully I haven't bored you to tears. I know I'm good at uh, waffling on, but I, I just get it, you know, I get into the details. Um, that's the product that we're aiming to do. You've seen the big difference that we're going for there. Hopefully it's clear to a guy, even if you're not a, you know, not a, a big sort of two stroke engine guy, and, and sort of uh, understand the different things with, with porting, but you should hopefully just from a, a general common sense perspective, see why this is gonna get a much better um, flow of transfer gases from the crankcase where my small, my fingers here, hey, up into the bore. It's all about efficiently moving that fuel air mixture and getting as much in as you possibly can before the port closes, uh, which this cylinder can do effectively. So we've now got a uh, extremely high performance, high tech, piston port engine at 35 cc uh, the weight has not changed so we've still got an engine that's much lighter than any 34 read out there and uh, the performance is going to be uh, you know pretty pretty naughty uh, we'll obviously take this on to other levels in future um, maybe you'll see some little uh, some little teasers in the next few months of different things but the, the 70 cc twin is going to come out with two of these bad boys and it's just <laughs> oh, guys it's, it's nuts absolutely nuts so, anyway thank you very much for that uh, thanks to all the guys that have been patient uh, while we've been, you know, trying to answer the messages. I think I get to get through everybody's messages at the end of the day. I'm trying really hard to keep that customer service level where you'd expect it from Taylor RC. And, um, you know, I'm pretty much back on form now after the uh, uh, the childbirth thing. And, um, yeah, I think everything is, is going well. So please give us feedback. If there's anything I haven't covered, please ask. I'll try my best to cover it as quick as I can. If you send us a message, just give us a few hours. You know, I do try and reply as much as I can. Emails is the best way to reach me. I do check my emails regularly, every single day. Facebook Messenger, I get to it as and when I can because it's, it is, you know, it's not, not my primary method of working. So anyway, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, until next time.